Hi everybody! Welcome back to the Crimson Diamond. It is Happy Crimson Thursday, I think. Yes, it is. Uh, and it's time to play more of the Crimson Diamond. So when we last left off, uh, we had gotten fingerprints from everyone except for Albert. One day, old Uncle Albert get himself uh, smell them fried catfishes. Uh, so Albert is here, but he's engaged in his work. He's busy and snubs us, as he always does, or he usually does. Um, so I guess the trick here, I, I checked the walkthrough. Uh, this would not have been apparent to me. This is another one of the things that I would have... I mean, it's not really... It's not a super hard puzzle. It's just, like, I'm not sure how you're supposed to know that you're supposed to do this. Um, you take a, uh, a cookie. We, we already got a cookie from here. We got, like, that, that one uncooked... Or not cooked. Uh, that one unbaked cookie. Uh, because we got Jack's fingerprint from it. But we get another one now. You take a freshly baked thumbprint cookie from the tray. And this one is not uh, unfinished. This one is finished. It actually has red raspberry jam in the middle. And uh, three of the names of thumbprint cookies do have Jack's thumbprint impr imprinted into them. Okay. Ah, uh, Jack's thumbprint forms the jam, pretty well. Too bad it's not really a good sample for comparison. All right, can I eat the cookie? You eat the delicious thumbprint cookie. It's, it's rich and buttery, and the raspberry jam is intensely colored and flavored, but not too sweet. Mmm, Jack, this is delicious. Well, thank you, Miss Maple. I'm very proud of my whole... Ha <clears throat> okay, just a moment. Hallon Grot. Oh boy. Uh, so, w Wiktionary provides two definitions. Definition one, baking. A type of small round cookie with a central depression filled with raspberry jam. A thumbprint cookie, a jam drop. Okay, so it's, it's, so it's these thumbprint cookies, but they're also called jam drops or halongradas. From the word halon, which means raspberry. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't know that halon means raspberry. Is that... Okay, interesting. Halon is apparently uh, another word for ras... Oh, it's not from English. It's Swedish. Okay, halon means raspberry in Swedish. Okay, and grotta is cave, so it's literally like raspberry cave. Okay, cool. Halon grotta is raspberry cave. Cool. When... You, when You'll ever use that information in your life? I don't know, but now you know. So yeah, definition one is it's it's a thumbprint cookie or a jam drop, as it's also called. Definition two, slang, a vagina. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Uh, okay, is Jack Swedish then? Is that implying that he's sweet? I mean, I guess it it's not really doesn't really matter too much, but I, I assume he, okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's can we take another cookie? We can, because uh, we actually need the cookie not for us to eat, but uh, to give to Albert. But before we do that, uh, we need to do something else with the cookie. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. We need, and again, I don't know how you're supposed to know this. Like, I'm not aware of any clue that, you know, actually, to be fair, before we, um, before I just blindly follow the walkthrough, why don't we give this a try? Let's see what happens if we just give the cookie to Albert without uh, give cookie to Albert. What does he do if, if we just give him the cookie? Say, Mr. Espa, how do you like this thumbprint cookie? Albert's eyes light up. Albert is a bit of a portly fellow. I guess this is, is meaning to imply that he'll never turn down food because he's a bit of a... Uh, he, he's got a bit of a, a bit of weight to him, doesn't he? Uh, at least visually it seems that way to me. Splendid. That's just what I need. Thank you, miss. Albert thoroughly enjoys the cookie, licking his fingers and smacking his lips. Crunch, crunch, smack, gulp. Delicious. I could do with another if you find yourself downstairs again. Ah, uh, sure thing. Okay, so... Again, uh... 
I'm not really sure how you're supposed to figure out. I mean, I guess the fact that he eats the cookie is a hint that, that there's something going on there, that you somehow use the cookies as part of the puzzle solution. But I don't know how you'd get, uh, let's see, I don't even, hold on, I don't even know where the ingredient is, because we need to get something here. We need, to, hold on, is it on the counter? There's an L-shaped kitchen island. You see a, sh so, okay, you see a salt shaker in the kitchen island. Okay, cool. This is what we need. So let's get the salt shaker. Hey, where do you think you're going with that? If you want to use the salt, just use it here in the kitchen. I probably shouldn't walk off this with the salt. Jack wouldn't be too happy about that. Okay. That's fine, but we have, uh, oh, no, we don't have a cookie because we, okay. Let's take another cookie. I've stolen three of the cookies so far. We're getting a little greedy here, but, and now we salt the cookie. You take a generous helping of salt, oh, you shake a generous helping of salt onto the thumbprint cookie. A note of the entry notebook. How are you supposed to know that? Is there any kind of hint that you're supposed to do that? No, I mean, yeah, it says that, it says that you salted the thumbprint cookie, but there's really no, as far as I can tell, the game doesn't give you any hints that, I mean, these are things that are not necessarily difficult to understand. I mean, you put salt in a cookie, it's not rocket science, but how are you supposed to know that you're supposed to do that? This is, again, this is kind of like getting into the classic sort of Sierra situation where it's like, okay, the puzzle's not necessarily that complicated, but how would you know that the game expects you to do that? Please. Give the cookie to Albert. How do you like this thumbprint cookie? And he goes through the same conversation again. Albert eagerly takes the cookie and consumes the thumbprint cookie in two bites. Crunch, crunch, smack, gulp. Hmm, that was saltier than I was expecting. What an odd recipe. Hmm, that cookie's gotten me quite thirsty. Do me a favor and fill my drinking glass from that pitcher and hand it to me, miss. As you hand the full drinking glass to Albert, you, stealth you stealthily wipe its surface of your fingerprints. Ah, oh, thank you. Albert drinks the water in one gulp, then hands the drinking glass back to you. Oh. Wow, he drank that water very, very messily. Like, it seemed like he spilled the water all over the place. You carefully receive the glass, making sure not to touch the areas where he held it. Well done. All right, now can we dust the glass? Aha! Powdering Albert's drinking glass reveals a fingerprint. Cool, well done. Get fin f fingerprint. Get fingerprint. You're the prisoner on the powdered fingerprint. Finally, I've obtained everyone's fingerprints, plus fingerprints from the crime scenes. Compare fingerprints to see if you can draw any useful conclusions. Thank you for the clear instructions, game. Let's compare fingerprints. Flushed with success, you rush to your bedroom and eagerly spread out your complete set of fingerprint samples on the low coffee table. After comparing the, the complete set of fingerprints, you're able to conclude... Amazing! The fingerprints from the jewelry box and the cure cabinet match the fingerprint you obtained from Margot. Uh-huh. Okay. Aha! Margot was the culprit behind both crimes! I should confront her with my findings. Huh, that wasn't field work, but it was pretty satisfying. My go. I know you stole Ness's ruby brooch and the silver stands. I know that Ness is a little difficult, but this isn't the way to deal with her. I'm cringing just a little bit because if you just found out that someone had done this, is the smartest thing that you could possibly do to go directly to that person and say, I know that you did it. If you're going to investigate... On the other hand, what else would you do? I mean... Ideally, you'd try to get some further information, but what further information is there? I mean, Margot presumably did this for who knows what reason, and how else, you know, what, what other information are we supposed to get? I don't know. Um... Please let me help you set things right. I have to give Nancy credit. She, she's really very sweet. Like, she's not coming here accusingly and saying, uh, you, uh, you, you, you dirty so-and-so. She, she's actually saying, you know, please, let's, let's, let's help, uh, let's help each other out. Let's, let's set things right. That's actually very, very sweet of her. Nancy's really a very, uh, very, um, uh, 
Um, she's 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 very um, ethical, like she tries to do the right thing, but she's not necessarily naive. Like she's not uh, she's not she, she's not dumb. Well, sometimes she's she's kind of naive, but not. I don't know. Anyway. She would take everything. Yes, I smashed the curio, so it broke my heart to do it. I like the way the... I like the way the animation has done her eyes, because she's just... Like, we've, we've literally just woken her up from, from what's probably a deep sleep, and her eyes are so, like, so heavy-lidded that she can hardly see. It's like... I like the way they actually animated her eyes to, to look like somebody who's literally just woken up. But the silver wedding stains are even more precious. I save them and give them to someone I trust for safekeeping. Nessa would sell them as soon as she was back in the city. At the very least, she would take her share and sell one of the steins, splitting the set. She doesn't understand why that should ha shouldn't happen. She is vile and heartless. Why should I want to set things right? When I need things, things set right, no one helped me. That woman deserves everything bad that comes to her. And more. You may be right about that, but you deserve better than to be a thief. That isn't who you are. Margot, the brooch at least. Will you let me give back her brooch? Ah, fine. The brooch is hers after all. It's in my walk-in closet. I will tell you where it is. Why? Why must the world be as it is? Nancy. Ah. Ah! Is she dying? Oh no. Mago? Are you okay? Mago? Uh... I think this means we get to keep the brooch. Um, you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing at myself because that I I know that was probably not the reaction. That probably should not have been my first reaction, but that was my first reaction, which probably doesn't say something very good about myself. But that was just like, hey, cool, free brooch, nice. You hurry down. <laughs> you hurry downstairs to tell Mr. Richards about Margot's sudden decline. Mr. Richards, come quick! There's something wrong with Margot! What? Oh, who's skulking around outside? That's also taken from the Colonel's request, of course. Outstanding! Fantastic de detective work, Nancy. You're a natural. So, I guess... Did I miss anything? I guess this is the end of Chapter 3, then? Um... I don't know. I, I think there was one time when I supposedly was supposed to be able to eavesdrop on some people and I didn't so maybe I missed that but otherwise I guess I got most of the stuff hopefully by the time you and Mr. Richards arrive in the master bedroom Margot's body is already cooling oh she's gone okay the commotion soon brings Nathan and Jack to the room Nathan's eyes widen but he doesn't say anything Jack looks shocked and a bit remorseful Hmm, could Jack have had something to do with this? The three men gently carry Margot down to the root cellar and lay her lay her out on a long wooden table. It's shocking to see Margot lying dead on the table. The kindness and warmth that once lit up her face are gone forever. Nathan and Jack stand there staring down at the earthen floor. No one seems to know what to do. What can be done after all? After a long while, Mr. Richards exhales heavily and speaks. Go do what you need to do, then head out to the station to notify the authorities. Not like there's any rush now, is there? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Evan. Yeah. Excuse us, miss. <laughs> She's just like standing there in the in the in the archway or the in the not a doorway. Is that a doorway or an archway or whatever? She's just standing there in the exit, like, just blocking them. Mr. Richard slumps on, his, on the stool, his head bowed. He doesn't look at Marco. It's almost like he can't. Oh, Mr. Richards. 
What's going on here? Type review to review your investigative goals. Chapter 4, Tensions. Game is auto-saved. I have to say, like, if my girlfriend or partner just, just died like that, I don't know that I, would, that I could sit with a body like this. I actually don't know what I would do. I, I don't know that I could just... I mean, if she was sick, I would stay with her, but if she, you know, if she's already gone, I don't know that I could do this. Anyway, um, this is the lodge's root cellar. It's a few degrees cooler than the rest of the house, making it ideal for storing a wide variety of supplies with which to provision the lodge, and also dead bodies, I guess, to, yeah, help preserve them. There's other stairs, yeah. The shelves can an array of root vegetables as well as jarred and bottled goods. There are sacks full of apples and potatoes. My goodness, Jack has done such a wonderful job with his little vegetable patch. Margot is here. Evan is here, yeah. Can I get any roots? <laughs> Either that isn't here, so you no need for that. All right. Can I get some apples? These are the same small, sour, inedible apples in the orchard. You'd prefer them baked in a pie. Can get some potatoes. As comfort, <laughs> as comforting as it would be to carry a potato around in your pocket, you resist the temptation. I think that might be a bit, just a bit of sarcasm. There's no smoke here, nor do you have any on your person. I like how it, how it says there are no apples here, but then it describes the potatoes. Potatoes have a special significance for you. Your grandparents immigrated to Canada from Ireland because of the Great Famine. Okay, so Nancy is Irish. I did not realize that her, her ethnicity was not... I mean, I guess the red hair might have been a giveaway because red hair is usually something kind of Irish. There are not a lot of other... European um, ethnicity is known for that, but all right. Um, is there any point in You're like to rest on a long wooden table? Oh, Marco! I guess we can't talk to her now. You'll never be able to talk to Margot again, and that makes you sad. Oh. This is actually a lot sadder than, uh, like, the deaths in the Colonel's Bequest were handled with a bit of humor. Like, there was kind of a little bit of camp element to them that kind of made them less uh, saddening. But this is just, this is just really sad. It's actually, this is this has been handled very. Uh, I won't say it's been handled badly, but it's, at least it's been ha it's it's being handled a lot more somberly, like a lot more soberly than um, than the Colonel's Bequest did uh, its deaths. Um, I guess we should talk to Evan. I'm so sorry, Mr. Richards. Thanks, Nancy. Well, I guess there's not much else to say. Um, doesn't seem like there's much to do here either. I mean, all right. Hmm. According to Evan, Jack and Nathan will eventually be going to the train station. I wonder if I can catch them and ask them a few questions before they head out. I know it's been to the notebook, but where are they is the question. I mean... Okay, so we can type review to, ex to check our goals. Oh, we need to examine Margot's body. Okay, uh, I guess... Hold on, can I get back into the cellar? Yes, I can. Um... I guess I should, I was thinking, should I search her body, but that just seemed a bit disrespectful, especially since Evan's sitting right here. I kind of thought, like, I don't really necessarily... All right, search the body. You want to have a look? Mm, I'm going to go have a drink. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't blame you. Get out, get out of here, buddy. Go and, go and get some rest. You probably shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be sitting here. It's not going to help you. You determinedly decide to take a closer look at Margot's body. Oh, boy. You pull away the sheet covering Margot. Your desire to understand what happened out out outweighs your squeamishness. Despite Margot's panicked final moments, she now appears peaceful. This is... Seriously, this is just really... Alright, how are we... What are we even doing? Like how... There are plenty of areas that would warrant closer examination. Do I need to get specific here? She's still wearing a plush blue bathroom with its two pockets and matching sash. Her hair glistens even in the low light of the root cellar. And lips and skin, while so lovely, are starting to take on less than lovely hues. This is this is getting gruesome. First, it was really sad. Now it's getting kind of gruesome. Like we're kind of watching her. Gosh. Um, can we check her pockets? 
I mean, so after all manner of items, yeah, look in pockets. Turn a small silver key in one of Margot's pockets. Okay, we got a key. Is that it? Oh, I need to get the key. All right. Take the Margot's pocket and put it in your own. Hmm, I wonder what this opens. All right, look. Is there anything else in the pockets? There's nothing else. Okay, fine. Um, I don't know. Do we look inside her, like, I mean, do we look in her mouth? Sometimes people have open mouth. I mean, sometimes you can... Okay, an examination of the inside of Margot's mouth reveals she didn't, she didn't choke to death. Okay. Her tongue isn't swollen. As far as you can tell, there's nothing lodged in her windpipe. Okay. Can you open her eyes? Well, it's been squeamish about eyes. You decide to leave Margot's eyes alone. All right. Looking, I mean, I guess looking in her nose and ears won't bring much, but... All right, so her nose feels nothing unexpected. Ears. Looking in her ears. Okay, that's fine. Um... Examine hair. This part of the Margot's imp impeccably coiffed hair is hiding some thinning areas and a few bald patches, probably relating to what she was poisoned with. I'm going to assume that she... W what are the symptoms, actually? So, assuming that she was poisoned with arsenic, which um, I have a feeling might be the case, because we found... Remember we found that flypaper with arsenic in it, and the game kind of said, hmm, arsenic. What are the symptoms of arsenic poisoning? Hold on, let me check. Again, I'm going to use Wikipedia, and again, I know that people say Wikipedia is not... Uh, not authoritative, but I mean, come on, let's, let's, it's just a game. We're not actually going to be practicing medicine here. We're just kind of trying to get some ideas of what's going on with, with the game. Um, okay. Ingesting large amounts of arsenic can cause symptoms similar to food poisoning with abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea starting within hours. Um, the heart and nervous system can also be affected, causing disruption to heart rhythms, heart failure, confusion, seizures, brain swelling, coma, and death. Inhaling arsenic gas... Okay, probably wasn't... She probably didn't inhale gas. Um, chronic ingestion... Chronic ingestion of lower levels of arsenic causes... Okay, so I'm going to guess that we're looking at not... Um, not like acute poisoning, not like she all of a sudden had one huge dose. This is probably more like a case of chronic ingestion of lower levels of arsenic. So that causes visible changes in the skin, typically hyperpigmentation, dark areas, but sometimes hypopigmentation, light areas, or an alternating... or an alternating areas of each. So experience general thickening of the skin on the palms and soles of the feet or small thickened areas. About 5% of those develop light colored bands across the fingernail called Mies lines. Chronic exposure eventually causes disease throughout multiple organs, including peripheral neuropathy, enlargement of the liver and spleen, diabetes, heart disease, cognitive impairment, and damage to the portal vein. Okay, nothing specifically about hair. Uh, nothing about hair getting thinned out or anything like that. Um, but I suspect... Unless this is trying to imply that Margot is older than she seemed, which I guess is also possible, I'm going to guess that this is saying that this is somehow related to what she was poisoned with. Um, hold on, before I forget, what happens if I type review? I wonder if Margot was poisoned, how could it how it could have happened? Something she ate, drank? I obtained a small silver key from Margot's pocket. I wonder what it unlocks. I didn't see what Nathan and Jack are up to. Yeah, all right. So, um. I mean, we're obviously not going to cut her open and start examining her internal organs, and assuming that's going a bit far. But do we, do we remove her bathrobe? I'm hoping to learn more about what happened to Margot, but I don't think it would be appropriate to do that. Okay. I'm confident I can make some astute observations while still preser preserving her dignity. Okay, if you're not going to go, we're not going to undress her. That's that's good. That would be a bit. Uh... Can I check her feet? Intense scrutiny of Margot's skin reveals no bruises or abrasions, but you do find some rough scaly areas on her hands and feet, darkened areas, and red patchy lesions on her lower legs. Okay, so yeah, just so, like I said, chronic ingestion of lower levels of arsenic can lead to rough areas on the skin and uh, darkened or lightened areas, so like changes in pigmentation, darkened or lightened areas on the skin. So this is consistent with arsenic poisoning. I wonder these skin, pro if these skin problems have something to do with her aches and pains. All right, so pretty pretty compelling case for arsenic poisoning at this point because the symptoms are consistent and again since we found that you know that stuff with an arsenic in it i'm pretty sure that that's uh, a big clue um okay so we can pretty well can assume not necessarily conclude conclusively but at least assume that margo was poisoned with arsenic um that's well and good but that doesn't really lead us to the the culprit who did it and why 
Um, I'm gonna assume that we'll figure that out. Let me see, let me just check the walkthrough here. Let me go on and just make sure I'm not gonna miss anything in the walkthrough because obviously this is an important scene that we're doing here. So, um, so let's see, we need to examine it. So we, so we checked her skin, eyes. Oh, I didn't check her nails. Uh, examine nails. You leave some faint white lines across Marco's fingernails. I wonder these lands, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, the uh, symptoms that I was reading said uh, the fingernails sometimes exhibit um, around 5% of those affected developed light colored bands across the fingernail called Mies lines. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's obviously supposed to be arsenic and we didn't check her, uh, I didn't say check her hands, did I? Oh, okay, we got that when I said examine your feet. Okay, so hands and feet are basically the, the, the same in this case. They have rough, scaly areas. Okay, um... Oh, and we can smell her mouth, okay. There's a distinct garlicky smell around Marco's mouth. Okay, but she didn't eat any garlic, so... Uh, I'm gonna think Jack, Jack hasn't cooked us any meals using garlic. I know that Margaret doesn't eat garlic. She avoids it altogether. Uh oh, what else smells like garlic? Okay, does arsenic smell like garlic? I don't see that in Wikipedia, so let me ask Google. Does arsenic smell like garlic? When arsenic is heated by bright sunlight or in a laboratory in experiment, it passes directly from its solid state to a gas and gives off a distinct garlic odor. Okay. Interesting. I guess, would metabolism inside the body cause that then? Okay, so we've, um, I think we've, oh, one, okay, we're supposed to take some of her hair. So we've already looked at her hair, can we take some of her hair? After whispering an apology to Marco, you, take, you took a few strands of her hair from her head. I don't think I can make much use of this, but it might come in handy later. Especially if her death is suspicious. All right. Okay, I think we're done here. I think I think we've seen all that we can. Uh, you care if you place the sheet covering Marco. All right. Wow, this is really... Uh... Just, just the tone is a bit... Uh... Like, I, I know there's, like, you know, when you have horror movies and things like that, you know, I mean, sometimes it's a bit scary, but this is, this is it's not really scary. It's just kind of, like I said, it's just, just kind of sad. Um, all right, let's see. So, um, let's see, where do we... Let me save here, because I think... Um, I think I don't really know exactly what I'm doing. I mean, I'm sure I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I don't really know where I'm going, but I'm looking for, hold on, what are we looking for? We want to find Nathan and Jack. So where are Nathan and Jack? Are they, um, the walkthrough seemed to suggest they were outside. Is that, uh, Hmm. I can hear Jack and Nathan talking, but the sound of the river is making it hard to hear them. I wonder what they're up to. Okay, this is suspicious. These two are definitely up to something. What are these guys doing? Um... <laughs> really? Hold on. So if I approach them... Oops! Looks like I stumbled onto a conversation. Maybe if I'd approach from a different direction. We'll talk later. We aren't alone anymore. What are you guys up... Oh, Nancy. What are you guys up to? Hi, everybody! What, what y'all doing? Uh... Just getting some fresh air. Really? Well... I found some interesting samples on the riverbank this afternoon. Actually, I used a trowel to dig into the dirt. Otherwise, I wouldn't have found anything. Is that so? Can we have a look? Of course. 
Each of the samples he collected from the river of Nathan and Jack. They inspect the samples intensely and exchange meaningful looks. What do you think? Very nice, Nancy. There are white garnets. Pretty big ones, too. Yes, sirree. Very pretty. Maybe get them to set in silver when you're back in the city. White garnets? Are you sure? Yes, very sure. Mm-hmm. At least... Okay, come on, guys. Well, okay. Excuse me, I have to go to the carriage house and prepare the automobile for Jack's drive to the train station. Thanks, Nat. Of course. Good evening. Uh, nice night for a walk, isn't it? Guys. Sure is, Jack. Darn it! I miss talking to Nathan. I ought to find him and question him before he leaves. Alright, so I got a bunch of notes out to my notebook, but I need to I need to eavesdrop on these guys. So if I if I approach from a different direction. So let's see. So I approach from the top here. So if I approach from the left like this. Okay. Entering from the left didn't help. So let's try entering from the right, I guess. But it seems like... Oh. No, that... Okay, so hold on. So what am I supposed to do? Wait a minute. Hide behind the tree on the left to eavesdrop on the conversation. Really? What tree? This tree? This is not a tree to hide behind. We can, we can clearly see Nancy behind the tree. Seriously? Hold on. Okay, let's try it, because entering from the left and right obviously didn't help. Alright. Hide behind tree. Oh, okay. I mean, come on, she's clearly visible, but maybe... Alright, whatever. Can't just toss these into the river like we used to, more's the pity. If Mr. Richards hadn't hurt his back trying to take this all on himself. I wish he'd asked for help before it came to that. With all the extra scrutiny lately, he can use all the help he can get. Lucky for us, it was mostly overcast last night. No moonlight, no sparkles. Lucky for us. Come on, guys. Like You don't see Nancy there. I think that's all for now. Good thing there were no big ones tonight. Agreed. Meet you in the carriage house. Yeah, I'll dump it in the smokehouse as usual. See you soon. Hey, Jack! Ah! What were you guys up to? Me and Nat were just getting some fresh air. Really? I was getting samples from the riverbank this afternoon, and it looked a lot like that. I found some interesting stuff. Oh, yeah? Can I see? Of course! Nancy! Okay, I take it back. She's naive after all. You show the samples collected from the river to Jack. He scrutinizes them very closely. What do you think? You got yourself some white garnets. Pretty nice ones, too. White garnets? Are you sure? Definitely, but if you want a second opinion, I can show them. I can, I can take them to show Nathan and ask him for you. Okay, so these are obviously. They're obviously not white garnets. They're, I, I mean, it's pretty obvious these are diamonds, and he's trying to hide it. He's trying to get her to think they're garnets when they're obviously not garnets. They're something else. How about it? Hmm, that's okay. I'll keep them for now. So yourself. Darn it, I missed talking to Nathan. I ought to find him a question before he leaves. Okay, I guess we can't avoid missing Nathan. I guess he doesn't stick around, so we'll have to... All right, um... Need to find Nathan. All right. I guess that'll be it for now. This has been uh, Continuing Adventures of Nancy Maple in the Crimson Diamond. Uh, gosh, this this episode ended up being more eventful than I was expecting. A lot of, a lot of stuff suddenly happened all at once. So, um, yeah, okay. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care, everybody, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye for now.